Welcome, you're listening to the best of investing on News Talk 910. This is the show where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. And for those of you listening to us for the first time, here's our format. A few guys sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm pleased to have as my co-host, Mark Hahn from Pacific Private Money, California's fastest growing private lender, and Lou Botmall of LPL Financial. Our phone number is 888 888- 912-1190. Now write that number down, 888-912-1190, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia question for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are sponsored by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, located one hour northeast of San Francisco. The vacations are free. Their only request, a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses, and their website is lighthouseforfun.com. You can reach them at 916-777-5511. And today's trivia theme is Odd Names in Sports. It'll be kind of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Our website is bestofinvesting.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube by taping Best of Investing Radio Show. And Lou, let's get right with you because you've got a lot of great economic information for us. Well, I, I think as we uh, end the week, it's uh, pretty interesting out there. Uh, the market activity, we've kind of come up um, to a pretty high level in the market, uh, which has surprised a lot of people. Um, the, you know, we've seen a steady rise in these indices over time, and, and people are really wondering why. What's what's really the backdrop to how come the market's going up? And it's really a, a backstory built on you know a few sentences in a Fed statement. And very quickly for our listeners out there, um, the Fed Federal Reserve meets and discusses interest rates. Real estate people laugh at that because they, they have to predict <laughs> just as much as anyone else. And uh, during these meetings, they discuss what they're going to do to the economy, what they're going to do with interest rates, and. You know, there's a thing called the uh, Beige Book, which actually contains the notes. And this week in the notes, they said, well, we might do quantitative easing for three. Quantitative easing, just again for listeners, is that's where they go out there and buy a bunch of bonds, lower interest rates, and let the economy go hog wild. Uh, <laughs> that's, you know, it's, that's what happened. Close happened. your eyes. Close yeah. your eyes hope, well, the stock market them. seems to like it, though, as you no, say. No, ab- absolutely. I mean, we, we're on the precipice of probably a, you know, a, somewhat of a negative quarter from a, a three standpoint looking forward there's nothing dramatic where I go oh hey look at look at the outlook with this company and locally here this week we heard Autodesk is laying off what 500, 500 people, 500, people. Yeah. so it's but know, they won't say where no they won't and, yeah. and they're talking about you know going into cloud computing which just hasn't been one of their strong suits and that's kind of the answer to everyone's tech problems lately or we're working towards the cloud or working towards mobile uh, but I mean it's a good company they have a great product I think they'll be fine but you know the question is there's there's a lot of kind of caterpillar also said, hey, we, you know, we have kind of a negative outlook, especially in China. So there's not a lot of great news out there. And it, I, I think you know, the Federal Reserve is like, hey, let's uh, kick it into gear and get the economy over this hurdle and start lowering unemployment fact, again. So are they going to lower the discount rate again? They the can't. Idea? No, it's, I mean, you can't go below zero. Well, I don't right? know. You sure you can. <laughs> they've been talking about QE3 for a little bit, right? Haven't they hit it that already several months ago? Absolutely. No, they, they've been, this, this has been on the, 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 hanging, the, radar. the hanging edge of the cliff for yeah. a while. So, so what interest rate are they going to lower then? The, no, it's not, it's not necessarily lowering the interest rate, which is already low. They said it's going to be low for a while. They start buying the bonds, which injects a bunch of cash into the banking system, which means all, all of a sudden lending becomes easier. In theory. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great part point, Mark, because last time the money wasn't flowing easily. The banks were under some restrictions, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So they're going to start giving 105 uh, percent uh, LTVs on houses again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy day! Uh, so, I mean, so Lou, why do people like Steve Forbes, publisher of Forbes Magazine, just let go that they're railing against the idea of another QE? Well, that, that's a um, great question because in the end, the, the real result of it is we increase our balance sheet. We're borrowing money inject the economy to make things better. And people say that this much medicine isn't going to cure a pretty sick economy because in the end we've got to pay off debt. They've also talked about going back on the gold standard, but you'd have to have gold. That was on the 10, news this week. Yeah, yeah. $10,000 $10, an ounce. I think, you know. I think that silver standard might be a little easier, more silver out there. But, you know, the, <laughs> Steve Forbes has a valid point because what people are concerned about, are, you know, our debt was downgraded last year to double A because our balance sheet's so out of whack. Because we owe so well, much who, money. Who would be triple A? Well, right now, I I probably say uh, Sweden, um, so, yeah, maybe Brazil. Um, really, a couple, yeah, Brazil? Yeah, Brazil, yeah. Brazil. I, Brazil's not there yet, but they're approaching. I, mean, I, I think I think the next ten years, Brazil will be 
one of the better. It's interesting because when yeah. I was I was there in Rio in, in 1988, and the, it was really funny because they had just changed from the Crucero to the Cruzado, and, right. and they just decimated the um, uh, their currency. And in fact, it was so bad that they said, "We've even set up a little black market." in the hotel for you to exchange your currency. So rather than go to the bank, you can go to the black market. I mean, they called it the black market, and it was in this five-star hotel. And we said, is, is that legal? And they go, no, but it's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's, <laughs> everyone does it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it must be okay. Yeah, they're, they're, other countries present certain challenges, especially when changing currency. I had a friend that went to Cuba, and you're allowed to exchange $100 a day in Cuba. Don't ask, don't ask me how it got there. I can't really disclose that. But, um, the, uh, <laughs> The, the end result is uh, Brazil, Australia, uh, Sweden because um, of the oil reserves that are uh, sweet, or yeah, Sweden, the Corona is the big, you know. I like Corona. Corona. Yeah, Corona is the big, oh, here we go. That's I the walked good, yeah. that one. Yeah, of course yeah, you did. Yeah. Every single time. <laughs> but these countries are emerging, they're strong, they're small, they don't have balance sheet issues. So between our statements around, and remember, I think I forgot to mention that next week, the Fed goes to, you know, Jackson Hole, we have this Republican convention, which I'm sure you guys will be talking about. Uh, next week. I'll be glued to the TV. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that or the hurricane, pick one. But, I'm, um, I'm going to be glued to my bed with my eyes closed. That's what I'm going to do. Well, uh, <laughs> obviously we're not on the Rush Limbaugh station any longer, but um, <laughs> I can say that. But, uh, the, um, you know, during, during, you know, the Republicans are talking a lot about the debt ceiling and what's going on, paying off the debt. But in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, every year, they have this kind of, a, there is a, you know, pretty constructive meeting. Think or, tank. Think tank, but you know, what do we really new, need to do to get the economy going? They're stabbing each other with swords, saying, "What's the next step?" Okay. And uh, you know, Ben Bernanke usually makes a statement at the end of Jackson Hole, which I think would be the 31st of August, a week from this past Friday. And boom, there we there we go. There's a decision to whether we do it or not. So the market could be heading down if nothing happens. And the same is coming. We'll talk about Europe in maybe another segment, but Europe has the same thing where people are talking, but no one's doing. Okay. It's an issue. All right, hey guys, uh, just a quick, before you go to break here, uh, for you real estate investors out there, uh, you're not going to want to miss an awesome event being held at the Santa Clara Convention Center on se Saturday, September 8th. And check them out, www.exposiliconvalley.com. And my co-host, partner in crime, Mark Hahn, is actually going to have a booth there, and I'm also going to be there, so you can come and meet your favorite hosts of the best of investing uh Absolutely, yeah. show. two weeks from today, uh, Saturday, September 8th, the, real, the Silicon Valley Real Estate Expo. It's uh, going to be very well attended. There'll be good educational classes, lots of vendors, and the networking is going to be spectacular. Exactly, and so it promises to be uh, quite an event. Mm -hmm. So we are going to cut to our first commercial break, and uh, again, the trivia theme is odd names in sports. In hockey, what is the, the machine, what's the name of the machine that they use to groom the ice? The first three callers with the correct answer are going to win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. I keep thinking of Snoopy driving that thing. Yeah, we're we broadcasting in Canada right now. I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You'll know it. As soon as we say it, you'll know it. Uh, their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. In hockey, what is the name of the machine that is used to groom the ice? 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, email address, and remember, please speak slowly and spell out your email one letter at a time. And we're going to be right back. Zamboni, right? That's correct. Zamboni. I was going to say Gamboni <laughs> or Gamberine, Gamberoni. That's Gamberoni. Uh, shrimp in Italian. Okay, hold on. Let's just be quiet for another few seconds. <laughs> I actually hit the pause button instead of the stop button. First time I ever did that. Yeah. I can't really hear my headphones down. I can hear, uh, I can hear you loud. Okay, yeah, I too. see. I, I'm <coughs> you, I can't hear myself. Oh, that's, okay. that's probably. Yeah, we'll that. yeah, that's. Am I talking too loud? <coughs> oh, well, I, I, I'm getting you loud here, and I can hear him loud. Yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Um, I can hear you better than hear myself. Oh, okay. Oh. You're, you're, yeah, you're. Oh, that's weird. Turn that up. Yeah, there. Sure, that's a little better. That's a little better. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I, I, I was talking about no one can hear me. No, we can, we can hear can you. Anyone hear me? <laughs> Is that a poem? Um, come back when you can find your way to your dreams. Um, or your dreams real estate. Or your dreams. Um, I'm 
to stay consistent. Yeah, let me yeah. Yeah, let's stay a little more consistent. We can, we, well, we can start with Jackson Holden and probably work on, on her thing a little bit and I can tell yep. you what that means to everybody. Okay. Is August typically slow in, in also uh, yeah. in, in the stocks? But certainly it has been in real estate. No, it's, it's the Hamptons. It's the Hampton season. Uh, that's the, that's, that's okay. the big joke in the market. Everyone's in the Hamptons. No one's really making any decisions. Everyone's in the Hamptons drinking and partying. But yet it's gone up. <laughs> well, they, that's the whole thing. Is like, why, why would it melt? You know, people called it a melt up, not a meltdown. What the hell's going on? Usually meltdown. It's like why is it why is it why is it going down? Everyone's going, why is it going up? So kind of the inverse of that. So but it's it's been a struggle. Yeah. Well, of course it's yeah. and, and, and yet and Apple still keeps you know, I thought it was overpriced yeah. at three hundred and at six fifty. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a great article, Mark Hulberg, who's on Market Watch, said that um, when a company's weighted that heavily in the index, the next year it usually has about a Probably because people going ahead and rebalancing their portfolio because right. it's too high anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, it's controlling a lot of indexes too. I was looking at the QQQ index. I think it's 18% of the QQQ index. That's a little too much. That's one fifth. <laughs> Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money and Lou Wattmall of LPL Financial. When we cut to the first commercial break, we ask this first trivia question. In hockey, what is the name of the machine they use to groom the ice? Gentlemen? Uh, Zamboni. Zamboni with a thinking, Z. I kept thinking Gamberoni. Isn't that like shrimp? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, right. Right. <laughs> that's a Sopranos used to take care of uh, people. Like, hey, watch out, we're going to give you the Zamboni. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Gamberini. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lou, uh, why don't you continue on because you were talking about uh, some economic news. Right. And the, the, as we ended, we talked about Jackson Hole real quickly where the, the Fed comes in and talks. And, and really what's going on here is, remember, there's there's several people involved in the Fed and some are saying, let's let's do this quantitative easing. The others are saying, let's not because we want to build the, out, the balance sheet. So, you know, you mentioned Steve Forbes earlier. He'd be on one side of the table. The other side of the table is the other people saying, no, we want to push things forward and lower unemployment. So it, it's really a challenge. You know, that along with um, something I want to comment on. A few weeks ago, I mentioned about Europe and, and dividend dividend producing stocks in Europe. Now, I thought those were you know probably becoming a better investment or a good place to put money. Um, and we've seen actually a little bit of a rally in Europe over the last couple of weeks. Nothing compared to the United States over the last five or six weeks, but you know pretty good nonetheless. And uh, that's mainly based on the same issue. You know, here we are controlled by people making decisions who are leaders. And the leaders over there, Draghi and, and others, are talking about how they're going to save Europe. Did you say they're groggy? Draghi. Oh, I'm Draghi. sorry. <laughs> they're probably groggy, too. Yeah, exactly. Sorry about that. That's my fault. Tough Thursday. <laughs> tough Friday. You, know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but no, they, 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 these people actually say things, and everyone reacts to it. That's all that's going on right now. The, the substance behind the economic decisions that we are trying to forecast on uh, six, nine, 12 months down the road, we don't really have a lot to go on. But these decisions could impact um, easy monetary policy, we discussed, and change things around. Uh, I think, you know, nothing's headed to the moon. I don't think 2006, 2007 is coming back around again. But one thing I wanted to explain to everyone that is a real big misnomer, it's not all about Greece. You know, it's not all about, you know, the, what you call what, the club med states in Europe. Um, <laughs> I mean, how, but, big, how big is Greece compared to the rest of the world? It's 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 nothing. It's, it's, it's a pimple. Yeah. It's you know. It's, it's is it more the domino effect? Is what they're afraid of. So exactly. As yeah. goes Greece, goes the remaining. Well, yeah. No, small it, countries. There's and then, there's a daisy chain in place here of events that occur. So how they treat Greece is more than likely how they'll start treating things like um, Portugal, Spain, um, Ireland, which are big countries. But the biggest um, analysts are, are saying right now is Italy. And yeah, now this now, now this is this is the whole problem. Italy has 1.8 or 1.9 trillion dollars of debt owed to European banks. This includes banks in Britain, banks, of course, in France and Germany. But all those counterbalance each other with loans they do to the United States. Yeah. So they don't want to if, just write a check and clear the books. Exactly. No, but if, if that that domino falls in Italy, 
the problem circumvents it all the way around back to the United States, and we got to make the issue here again. You know, I can see where, again, Greece may, may, may not be huge, but it's kind of similar to where um, the money market funds were worried about breaking the buck. Right. And, and okay, so what? It goes from a dollar to 99 cents, but that's actually huge because yeah. people have the uh, theory that this is supposed to stay a princi all that's principle. That's a consumer expectation that exactly. it's worth a dollar no matter what. At least. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When the buck breaks, it's a uh, catastrophe that can't be predicted. And did it, I, I remember years ago it almost broke. Almost and then, broke. And then they, 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 all, the, they, they all the other money market funds ponied up to make sure that this one company didn't. But then, did it finally break the buck? Yeah. So, point? so the the idea was that when Lehman fell apart um, unceremoniously in two thousand and eight, um, the dollar their money market funds were considered a zero balance, and they were partnered with I think fourteen other banks. So when that happened, when they went to business the next day, they had to report Lehman not on their balance sheet, not in their money market fund, which forced them to report ninety seven cents. On their money oh, market so reports, wow, 3% of it. right? Wow. So then they all came in and said, "Well, we can't do this because there's going to be a run on the bank." So then they, they propped it back up again. So we felt okay. So so, really far, no, so so far, nobody has ever been hurt in, with money market funds that uh, that we know yeah, of. that we know. Of. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there. I mean, if things progress, I think there would be some huge lawsuits. But that was probably you're right. That this this yeah. is the Greek problem, which turns into the Italy problem, which turns into the Spanish problem, the Italian problem. And when we when our market goes down because of Italy, what usually happens? Is this gets right back to your business. The yields on bonds in Spain and Italy yeah. go yeah. up. And that's mean, that means people are less interested, so they're not buying them. When you don't buy a bond, the rate goes up because no one really wants them. They're paying a premium for the interest rate. So that's when you see five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half percent interest rates in Spain and Italy. It's a problem. Uh, you know, Spain, I think, rallied tremendously off its problems um, a few months ago. It's, it's actually up a, a tremendous amount, but that's, that's a problem in the United States that I've been really having right now. Well, yeah, I remember I was saying it was in uh, Brazil in 1988, and someone had said, uh, you know, now 1988 interest rates were higher, we all know, but someone had said that you could buy uh, in, um, from at, the, at their bank, not, not just a corporate bond, but at the bank, they were paying 19% interest per month. Per month, in, month. In, Italy? in no, 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 no in Brazil? Brazil, yeah, oh, wow. and and gosh. I looked at it, and, and sure enough, they they were, and I, gosh, that sure that sure sounds pretty good, but I didn't do anything. I waited on the sidelines, yeah. and then sure enough, over the last, you know, over the next, excuse me, six months, they devalued it so much, you still lost money. Right, no, that's that's so, that. Well, that that gets back to the deflation inflation argument. That's really what the Fed's trying to do. They're trying to prevent that type of activity here in the United States, or that type of activity in France. Imagine you're France and Germany, and you have all these outlying countries. That are determining the price of your currency. You're like, and I mean, out of all of the whole thing, Germany goes, hey, we're we're okay. They export 50% yeah. of their goods and services. They're actually a strong country. France is not as strong as Germany, but it's stronger than most of them. And all of a sudden they're going, well, these Greek, Spanish, Portuguese people are devaluing our currency. And now they're asking us for help. What do we do here? And it's like, yeah, it's not silly. Right, right now. <laughs> and you know, it, it, when we measure returns. The problem we're really running into right now is like everyone goes, oh, the market's up 14% of August of this week. The S&P 500 is up 14%. That's a great number. But remember, we fell apart last August. So we're actually close to these numbers last year at this time, the first the first week of August. So measure returns, like I mentioned, Spain rallying a little bit. That's based off of, you know, Freedom Act moved downward. You're, you're a pretty smart guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bringing it back home. You know, we were talking about uh, in the commercial break. It's like... August is usually a slow month. It certainly is in real estate and has been in real estate and even in my lending business. It's been slow and, and I've seen a number of stocks being slow, but here we are. We're having this rally going on. Does anybody even know why we're rallying? It, or, it, it, and have a theory as to why? We're no, the, the, the theory is I mean, well, earnings season kind of subsided a little bit, and, and by and large, people thought, okay, we're going to do, do things in Europe and things in the United States to help encourage uh, buying. I, I, the only thing I see that, that that looks somewhat positive out there is that China and Brazil are going through some rough periods. They have, a, you know, Brazil has a lot of natural resources. China's a good manufacturing economy. I think those are probably better stories over the long run than we are currently right now. They're they're a little cheaper. But to your point, I mean, everyone, this is all rumor. Yeah. We we are really rallying on a rumor with not a lot of volume, not a lot of conviction, and that makes me actually a little bit nervous. To be honest with you, if I, if I can say that. Okay, you know, guys, we're gonna we're gonna cut to another commercial break, and uh, when we come back, we're gonna get into email time because we got a couple of good ones here. Um, 
But guess what? Next week we're going to have another special trivia contest where the winner is going to receive an, uh, just an overnight stay, not a two-night, but an overnight stay at the St. Regis Hotel in San Francisco, including breakfast. Oh, and not that. <laughs> so I'm sure you will. In the heart of the San Francisco Soma District, St. Regis, San Francisco, welcomes guests to one of the best addresses in the world, just steps away from the city's best shopping, restaurants, and cultural attractions. Here, timeless tradition meets modern luxury from the legendary St. Regis Butler Service to the hotel's world-class amenities. The hotel is part of a landmark historic building with a 40-story tower featuring 260 elegant guest rooms and suites and 100 luxury private residences, as well as the adjoining Museum of the African Diaspora. Uh, the St. Regis of San Francisco delivers an unmatched guest experience, along bringing a new dimension of luxury, service, and gracious living to San Francisco. And that's, that, uh, that's going to be next week, okay? Now we're going to cut to our second commercial break, and here's the trivia question. This is a little harder. And again, we're talking about odd names in sports. What is the name of the person who sits at the back of the crew boat and tells the rowers what to do? The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What is the name of the person who sits at the back of the crew boat and tells the rowers what to do? Call 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address, and remember, please speak slowly and spell out your email for us one letter at a time, and we'll be right back. I cruised last week for the first time. That is the hardest thing. <laughs> Have you guys ever tried that? I have not. No. Oh, I can barely walk around the block. I had nerve damage. <laughs> no, I, 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 I didn't know how flexible you needed to be. Yeah, I almost reached through stuff. your knees to pull the oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, I got out of that thing and I was like, I swelled everywhere. I, I, I rode in the bathtub. But yeah. It was, <laughs> oh, it was. With your brutal. ducky? <laughs> Gotta have the ducky. It was brutal. Uh, you brutal. know what the answer to that one is. No, I don't. It's a coxswain. Oh, okay. I thought it was the fluffer or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Are we on funny or die? We're on funny or die. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> now, it's interesting because they, it's, it may be pronounced that way, but it's spelled differently. C-O-X, right? C-O-X-I-A. Coxswain. Coxswain, yeah. Maybe. Oh, Coxswain. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, I thought so, that's how it was uh, pronounced, too. Awesome. Must be a British term, because they have a habit of throwing in all these, or French, actually. They, they'll throw in 37 consonants, and they throw all in, <laughs> like, chancelier. So no, so I just yeah. want French fries. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you, ever been, you guys been to France? Where's the yeah. champ Solissies? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Chancelier. Yeah. Just the River yeah. Thames? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so when I went to France, um, what did we do? We... Um, there's this one huge, just gorgeous church, and it's called Chocolat Bleu. I, I go, that's smell what, that. Well, well but that's how the, that's like the term. Chocolat Bleu! Yeah. Look at this place, Chocolat Bleu! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my, my favorite place, I, I did not go, my, my sister went with my folks in France, and my grandfather was probably 85 at the time. My, my parents, you know, they, they hopped in cabs together. Yeah. My grandfather was actually lived in France for three years when he was a kid, so he was sort of so he walks over, takes a cab with my my sister, his granddaughter. And my parents take a cab. He paid half as much money, going from the same hotel to the same place. He was over in France because he thought he was a local guy. Because he's with a younger girl, spoke French. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> my dad was pissed. <laughs> oh, I well, I had one. Well, we have time for this. Uh, <laughs> I had uh, we, when we were in France, we went to uh, this Le Tarjon or something. Oh my God, that was so, so scary. If you're gonna go there, just go there and, and like order like a drink of water. I mean, yeah. literally, it was it was ridiculous. Eighty dollars for like three strips of, of uh, asparagus. Oh, I mean, right. it, it was ridiculous. Anyway, so we, we it came it comes time for us to leave, and so we had uh, ordered a cab. We go downstairs, and uh, the person at the door says, "Oh, well, there's a cab right there." So, oh, okay. So we walk in, and and I, I I look, and the meter had been running for a good fifteen minutes. I mean, it started off at like twenty five dollars, oh. and and I I said uh, I, I said whoa I, he says oh well I was here you know I was here to pick up somebody else and they didn't show up so I take you I said yeah but you can put that thing back to zero oh no sir I cannot I said we're out of here that's ridiculous I go 
I'm not that other guy. That is so that. <laughs> I've been sitting Skip here. Someone's going to pay me for sitting here. Yes. <laughs> Socialist. Exactly. Yeah. Socialism, man. Oh, my God. Pay my medical care and pay for me sitting on my death. That's yeah. it. Sorry. Yeah. I, you know, I've sounded very Republican. Oh, Rush is on the you station. Said, no, you said you're, you're sounding very conservative. Yes. It's so, right. And intelligent and lots of common sense. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say Rush that. is on 910 AM. He is at 9 a.m. Yeah. 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 I haven't listened to him in years. I know. I, I, I get. He's, he's, also he's popular again because it's an election. I mean, old people who don't have anything else to do listen to him. They get all riled up. Is he, is he married again? Rush? Did he get divorced? Well, or something. Yeah. Huh. Okay. It's the drugs. <laughs> it's the hearing aids. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Don't talk so loud, Rush. Sorry. <laughs> That's not on tape, I hope. Uh, of course it is. You just seem more powerful than the beat. Okay. Sounds yeah. like a scary movie. I got a big nose, sorry. <laughs> just trying to cover myself. Okay, ready? Kind of. Hold this, your breath. Hold your breath for five seconds. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hunt and Lou Botmall. When we can't cut to the second commercial break, we ask this trivia question. What is the name of the person who sits at the back of the crew boat and tells the rowers what to do? I think it's Luke. a coxswain. I got one of those. I got one of those. Oh, oh no, oh, a coxswain is what you're talking about. Well, actually, that is correct. It is a coxswain, and we would have also accepted the guy who yells, row, row, row your boat. Those people are so mean. I've seen them before. Oh, they are. Yeah, they have a big bullhorn. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, where's the whip? They're going to have the whip, too. Okay, we're going to get right into email time. Mark, mm -hmm. here's an email we received for you. Why does it seem so hard to find good loans to invest in? Okay, well, that is a question um, from a person who's interested in trusted investing. And so for your listeners out there, uh, my name is Mark Hoff. I'm the president and broker of Pacific Private Money Loans. Uh, based in Marin County. We are a private money lender, also known as a hard money lender. We write loans to real estate investors. And what's interesting about uh, our loans is that they're funded by private individuals using their savings or IRA accounts. So the question um, that uh, this emailer posed, I was probably on my list of uh, investors because I have been getting a lot of phone calls lately going, how come I'm not seeing as many funding opportunities or lending opportunities as I was maybe six months or a year ago uh, coming via email. And that is actually um, uh, a, a big predicament today. Um, first off, let's, let's back up a little bit. You know, when the banks largely stopped making loans to real estate investors, the private money or hard money lending industry stepped up in 2008, 9, 10, and since to really fill that void and provide financing for for the real estate investment community. And um, generally speaking, not a lot of people were familiar with trusted investing uh, at that time when, when we started Pacific in 2008. Um, most of my lenders were experienced real estate professionals who knew about you know, funding loans and enjoying the high rates of return anywhere from eight to even as high as 12% that you could make monthly on your, on your month, not monthly, annual rates that you could receive interest payments monthly. But as, um, you know, as, as we've now been in this you know, almost zero interest rate environment where savings are really hard to, um, to generate uh, or yields on your savings are hard to generate, and of course the stock market's been very unpredictable, um, there's been a lot of demand and interest among people, quite frankly, who are looking at their retirement accounts going, I need to boost the yields I earn on my retirement accounts, so how can I do that? And Trust deed investing is considered an alternative form of investing. It's not like stocks or bonds. It's not, they're not traded um, uh, publicly. They're generally not liquid. But it's um, when you fund a loan or um, fund a trust deed investment, as it's called, um, what you're doing is you're essentially the bank. You're being the bank. So, um, and you have all the rights and revenues of, say, Bank of America, who makes a loan to a homeowner, except in this case, you're funding a loan to a real estate investor who really only wants your money for a short term, usually one year, two year, three years, and is willing to pay 
you know, as high as uh, 10, 11, sometimes even 12 percent for the use of that money. That's amazing in today's market that you'd still be willing to pay 10 percent. It is, it is. And so kind of getting back to, um, uh, you know, what's happening in, in that market is, so in the last year alone, I have probably added over 100 names to my distribution list at Pacific Title Limited, uh, names of people who want to know when funding opportunities or lending opportunities come about. And um, while our loan volume has remained fairly steady, um, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 loans per month we fund, the number of people in my list has been growing. And more and more people are, are learning about trustee investing. And so um, there's fewer deals to go around to the, the, the bulk of the investors. So what's happening in my office is the squeaky wheel's getting greased. I get calls from um, regular investors who just know to pick up the phone and go, hey, I'm sitting on $500,000, what do you got? I haven't seen anything in a while. And I'll just, you know, if there's something on my desk, I'll start talking to them but, about But are it. those same people uh, willing to take a lower interest rate for a group of big deal? Some of them are, some of them are. And, and that's another issue, which I can talk about in a sec, but, but really the, the bottom line is, is that uh, um, I have not been sending out in the same volume um, funding opportunities uh, to my distribution list because so many of the kind of squeaky wheel investors, trustee investors, have been just calling my office and quite frankly just taking the, you know, the, the funding opportunities literally as they're coming in and uh, saying just you know, call me on the next deal, don't even bother to write it up in fancy executive wow. summary, and, and which is what we usually do. So, so, it's, so the bottom line is, is it's Econ 101, it's supply and demand. It's, there's, there's more money that is interested in the high yields available through trustee investing. And of course, that's to be expected when, you know, so many people, you know, you've got boomers now and they're looking at the retirement accounts and they've been decimated a lot of them with uh, what happened in, in the economy in the last 10 years and, and or at least since, since 2007 and 8. And they're looking at, at you know, the income they need to earn off of their retirement savings in order to retire successfully, if I may use that uh, term. And, Quite frankly, most people are not prepared to retire successfully. So, um, so earning yeah. so earning high yields, or at least boosting the yield that you're earning on average on an annual basis, is really really important for just about everybody. Uh, you know, who doesn't plan to? You know, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it. If you if you can pay uh, some, <coughs> if someone can earn eight percent, that can really uh, add a lot if they have some other investments that are only paying two percent. Right, treasuries are only paying one point six this week. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, so. you can average up your, your rate of return quite a bit. Another thing that's that's interesting that people may not be aware of is is the way a lot of people invest in these high yield uh, secured instruments that we call trustee investing, which are basically notes secured by a recorded deed of trust. It's a loan. Uh, the way people invest, uh, many people invest, many of my clients are investing are through self directed IRA accounts. So um, it's not unusual for someone to call me and say, I am. Um, closing out and selling off the stocks and liquidating my holdings in my, say, Schwab or Merrill account or other um, 401k type or um, IRA account that doesn't really let you self-direct. You know, their version of self-direction is you can pick from this cluster of stocks or this cluster of mutual funds, but you can't go buy real estate or loan on real estate. They're just not set up for it, but there are um, companies uh, in the United States that are called IRA custodians, uh, and these IRA custodians um, are specifically created uh, and their charter is basically to allow self-direction in your IRA account. Now this could be a Roth IRA, this could be um, a product called, uh, so for example, solo, solo 401k, I and mean, there's a number of products that you can roll your existing IRA into, whether it's um, uh, a, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Well, one of the things that's really cool about that is that you can uh, earn tax deferred interest of the, let's say, 8%. I mean, when you start compounding that. that well, that's right. the whole idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah. investing in, in deeds of trust through your IRA account, whether it's a traditional or a Roth IRA, it's just, it's fabulous because, I mean, it's just really, it, it's it's a way to get extremely, uh, you know, high yields that you normally don't see in this in this environment that we're in. And so, 8, 9, 10% annual fixed yields with the interest paid monthly and secured, and secured by, by real, real estate, estate and you're not talking about 100% loan to value you're talking yeah. about right. like 60% and, right and we write these loans every single day and, and uh, again our, our clients are, are 
pretty and jazzed. And your default rate is pretty low. Well, it is now. I mean, traditionally, hard money loans were usually seconds made to people who had um, some kind of uh, distress in their lives. Yes, you do first. And, and now, it's really, it's not seconds to distressed borrowers. It's purchase money first to real estate investors um, who have no other alternative to use leverage. And, and what kind of default rate are you seeing now, Dave, on these first? I've got... Uh, it's less than 2%. Less than 2%. And that doesn't mean people lost all their money. That's it just means 400 loans over, over, over a five year period. Yeah. And all, all that means is that the person maybe stopped paying or delayed paying, and then it, you could theory, back. No, well, you could yeah. you foreclose, yeah. and then potentially you could even make more than you invested because if you're at 60% loan to value, you know, let's say you lent 60,000 on a, a place that's worth 100 grand, and you foreclosed, and you turned around and fire sale it for 80 grand, you'd actually make more than the 60 grand that you. So for more information, if you're curious to learn more about trustee investing, you can call our office at 415-883-2150. That's Pacific Private Money at 415-883-2150. Or visit our website. We just launched our 3.0 version uh, on the Pacific Private Money website. And for investors, that would be PacificPrivateInvestments.com. That's investments plural. Or you can go to investinginvesting.com and... Uh, Click on the link from there. There you go. All right, we're going to cut to our third and final commercial break. When we come back, we've got a great email for Lou that has to do with mutual funds. So, listeners, make sure you don't touch that dial. And here is our third and final trivia question where the theme is odd names in sports. I'm not sure if you guys will know this one. In which water sport is the term egg beater performed by its players? Now, you'd have to know the sport to know yeah, this one. Yeah, I know that one. Really? Okay, the first three call okay, hold on. <laughs> don't 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 I mean, okay. don't let the cat out of the bag yet. The first three callers with the correct answer when a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort, their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Better check them out before the uh, summer's over here. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. In what water sport is the term egg beater performed by its players? Make sure to include your name, email address, and speak slowly and spell out your information for us one letter at a time, and we'll be right back. Okay, anyone? Synchronized swimming. No. Ah, water polo. Water polo. Dang. <laughs> My son, you're not a betting man. Yeah. yeah. My son uh, did that over the summer, and he talked about that the whole time. His dad making him do it like for five minutes. You gotta go out there. It's like trading water. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's like one of the hardest sports there is. Yeah. I just wanted to know. I didn't really realize that. Yeah. I don't know if you watch the Olympics. They should have a little bit better. They're showing the, they showed the one with better prop. Or, yeah, that was pretty funny. But you got a what? Or she had a, a swim, they, had a full, they have a onesie swimsuit. This yeah. girl walked in and grabbed her, and her boob popped out. Yeah. Oh. I don't and think she did it, it was, on, but, no, it was but, on live TV, though. It was just kind yeah. of funny. Like, whoa, what, but what it was, was that? Real fast, though. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, don't TiVo that. Janet Jackson, but they, yeah. um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, I mean, they're showing the con, they had underwater cameras, you see the contact of these people. Oh, yeah, them. sometimes they, they were, they well, were for the guys, switches, yeah. you know, who were wearing one piece ones, sometimes a guy's foot will come up and take the yeah. shorts down. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have nails each other, and stuff. Yeah. And then, I saw one guy that was incredible, he grabbed the uh, ball and went like this with his hand shot in the back of his oh, head. Oh, they saw way. that it one. It was too. pretty cool. That was I'm like, whoa, that, that's, you yeah. know, yeah. that's funny. Well, okay. How much so, time do we have left? Like, let's see here. Uh, we have 12 minutes. Ooh, excuse me. 45 seconds. Let's take a walk. Yeah. How much? 12, 12 minutes, 45 seconds. Oh, we have a long segment. I'm sure you guys don't want me to go into Basel 2 or Basel 3. And yeah, no, no, it's, no, it's probably, <laughs> that's probably not a good no, we'll skip. We'll skip Basel 3 and the Dodd-Frank <laughs> Act and the restriction on preferred securities and banking. Well, Dodd-Frank okay. is interesting in that they, you know, it's, it's just... It'll affect you guys, wouldn't it? Well, it, it does because uh, when you say Dodd-Frank, what you're basically talking about is this omnibus, 10 yeah. bazillion page bill that covers just about every <laughs> facet of life you can possibly imagine right. in a negative way in the guise of 
consumer protection, okay. but it's really there nothing more than than just communism taking away consumer choice left, right, Kramer, center. Am I making left. a fashion statement? Do my socks go with these shorts? Both of those guys have, have their asses kicked. <laughs> Well, now you got well, to the, the, yeah, this article work, is pretty huh? interesting. Your finance advisor, Basil, um, between Basil Good 3 is, is the global, global yeah. one. So there's Basil 1, 2, and 3, which affected banking. There's Dodd and Frank. I said banks won't be able to issue preferred securities given the, the rules of Basil 3. Like you won't be able to issue preferred stock anymore. So and they have to call it all back in. They don't know. It's, it's considered bond, a tier 2 lending agreement. But it's not issued in bonds. Well, the preferreds are half bonds, half stocks. So. No, no, but I mean, yeah. are they going to let them? If they're not going to let them do preferred things and stuff, well, you don't know. I mean, that's a problem. How about the bench? <laughs> so we've got email time for yes. Lou, and then what do we got? Uh, what else can we do? Um, I was going to ask if you guys have heard about these Sharpie parties. Sharpie okay. parties? That sounds fun. Uh, we can talk about Prince Harry's. I thought what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but obviously. Ryan <laughs> yeah. Lochte was there. How about that? Huh? Racing him in the pool? That's pretty yeah. cool. And then uh, Lance Armstrong getting banned for life. Yeah, that's true. Stripped of his titles, and who uh, who's left? I mean, because yeah. the guy behind him, I guess, got busted too. They yeah. said, yeah. Right. So someone, like, someone suggested just give it to the last place guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not doping. What are Sharpie parties? Sharpie parties. We're gonna find out. Is, yeah, we're gonna find out. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Sounds okay. sounds like X-rated radio. No. Just no, radio. no, no, no. I, but it's not good. Though. I'll warn you. I'll warn you. It's not I'll good. warn you. No, okay. Good. okay. Like I said, we don't ever get hot tub parties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money and Lee Blotmall of LPL Financial. When we cut to the third and final trivia question commercial break, here was the question. In what sport is the term egg beater performed by its players? It's not synchronized it's swimming. It's not synchronized swimming, which I it probably think, could be, though. I think it's water polo. It is water polo, yes. It's, uh, I used to look at it. My son played water polo, and I, I, when I first saw it, I, I'm thinking, what's the big deal about this sport? And then he said, hey, Dad, you have to uh, tread water the whole time. I go, oh, you don't get to land on the, just, just walk the pool? No. Uh, no. It's not the hardest sport <laughs> there is. Yeah. Okay, probably There's not. one way or the other. And you're only allowed to use one hand. Mm. Really? You know, yes, but at a time. So you can switch from left to right. Okay, Lou, we had received an email for you, and here it is. It says, do you favor investing in ETFs or mutual funds? Can I take the Fifth Amendment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, um, uh, that, that's a great question, uh, one that's being explored. I, I, the landscape of mutual funds and, and exchange-traded funds or exchange-traded notes that are out there right now is, is expanding. Um, it's like a it's like a disease that needs a cure. It's it's really hard to navigate right now. Well, first, maybe explain the difference between the two. Okay, um, exchange traded funds are essentially you know somewhat of a fixed investment that replicates usually an index. It could be an international index like the Meta Index or the uh, S P five hundred like the S P Y um, is a, a commonly used ETF. So people trade in and out of those like stocks, and they trade every day like stocks. So mutual fund. Um, is the same thing. It's a basket of securities, but it's traded usually once a day at the end of business. But there are closed-end mutual funds and open-end mutual funds. Yes. That are ETFs both open and closed? Or is it just they can be. They can be. Okay. That, that, that's so ambiguous, I don't want to approach it. Uh, okay. make, make, because, I mean, it, it is, it's such a vast variety. If you yeah. look at those closed-end, because some have leverage and some don't, so it's really hard to really yeah. define some but, of those. But a closed-end fund basically gets traded like a stock. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. The day, yeah, they do. They do. The yeah. the mutual fund. Right, exactly. So, when, when people look at, you know, things they want to, opportunities they have in the market, they go, well, gee, I want to get in on a short time frame. Usually they use ETFs. They go, I'm just going to ride this. In it. You can buy the industrial index. You can buy the consumer distributing index. You can buy technical indexes, uh, utilities, whatever. You just jump in there and, and jump is, out. Is it a, tr it's a true index? It's a true right. index. Okay. Um, people would be, I think I discussed with you up here, we found, I found one stock. Uh, that control 20% of the QQQ index, which is the largest tech index out there, so NASDAQ 100. And uh, this one stock really controlled the, the return for the stock, for the, the ETF for the year. So you got to be careful about what you're buying. Um, indexes can get what they call weighted down by a few securities. I mean, a few years ago, um, I think back in the 90s, they said like Oracle, Sun Microsystems, Cisco, and Microsoft controlled the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 indexes. But I mean, if you're going to invest like in the 
Dow Jones Industrial. If you were to invest in the Dow Jones Industrial 30 or something, right. it's up 13,000 roughly. Um, there's an index that you can just invest yes. in that. Uh, just in that. And so, so and so if, if it turns out that it's, I mean, that's not necessarily heavily weighted per se. Um, no, it's it's not. It's it's weighted on you know certain stocks inside that index are okay. bigger than other ones. There's more interest in them. So we talk about market cap weighting. You know, for okay. listeners. That's the number of shares times the value of the shares. Right. So like Apple right now is, is I'm not recommending just for, for sake yeah, yeah, just but right. Apple is the largest market cap weighted stock in the country, in the world right now. Where, 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 how much is in that market? I think it's 650 billion, maybe? Yeah, so yeah, it's some right. astronomical number. I mean, it's, it's huge. So, you know. billion shares minus right, 600. Right, so yeah. you look at the S&P, how much of that is make up the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100 or other indexes? Um, mutual funds are usually controlled by a company they have a prospectus which defines what they can invest in, how they're supposed to invest, the liquidity restrictions are built around them. Yeah, those, those are going to be actively managed. Actively in, managed, in yeah. They, you can only trade them once a day at the most. They usually, at the close of business, they do they do their trading transactions. Um, the taxes on both are different. You know, uh, ETFs are taxed um, usually more on a, on a capital gains perspective. Uh, mutual funds pass along short-term and long-term gains because they're trading throughout the year. And usually you're following a manager. So let me give you an example of a manager. Morgan Stanley has mutual funds. The reason why there's so many mutual funds out there is because everybody has them. You know, every investment company, every uh, brokerage house has its own um, funds. And what we found out this week, which was really interesting, Morgan Stanley has a bunch of one stock in all yeah. mutual funds. <laughs> really? and Morgan Stanley was right at the pivot point of, you remember, it was it back in May when this company called Facebook? Facebook. I've never heard public. of it. I, you know, I... There's a little press around them earlier this year, but really what they're saying is, you know, they're wondering right now, this, this came out just this week, so I'm speaking very much out of school right now, but why is there so much Facebook stock in these Morgan Stanley companies? Well, did they, were they one of the underwriters? Yes, they were. They were the... What, is it possible they couldn't get rid of them, and so they threw them? No, we don't, we don't, we don't know, know yet. That, that could be, that's okay. a very good explanation. Or they were betting big on right. the well, outcome of That's probably more likely. They were right. betting so, going to double, like, yeah. Morgan Stanley. Well, it did double in half. <laughs> the other side. So, you know, mutual funds. We recommend mutual funds. You want to know who the managers are, and you know, every every fund company out there has some very particular funds that do very well based on you know, certain factors. You know, some are income based, some are based on a, a global perspective on, on stock investing. But you want to just look at the track records. The big thing I look for, like this week, I, I had to move out of mutual fund because the uh, manager left. There are three managers, and they had a great track record for seven years, and I'm like. They're gone, and I called people up. I'm like, "Well, who's going to replace them?" We have their assistant. Hey, this person's been in the business for three weeks. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, you know, maybe it's time to move out of those. So, well, see, that's the that's the interesting thing is that rather than uh, having clients just invest and forget or put their head in the sand or something, it's good to have someone like you to oversee it because you, the average person probably wouldn't have known that. No, they, they wouldn't. You know, I, did, yeah. I mean, they actually nowadays fund companies are, are they have to call us. Some instances we Whoa. request a phone call and say, "Hey, if you have a manager change, you got to contact us because that's a material event that we need to be aware of." Well, you've been giving us a lot of great information, not only at the ETFs and mutual funds, but all the uh, grease and all that other stuff beforehand. <laughs> so, you sure, like you said, you sure seem like a smart guy to me. <laughs> so, how would uh, if listeners wanted you to take a look at their portfolio or give advice on mutual funds or whatever? How would oh, they, um, have, have me give me give me a call at the office. It's uh, it's four one five two five six eight nine seven zero. Four one five two five six eight nine seven zero, or they can email me, which is Lewis L O U I S. There's a period there, last name Botmall, B is a boy, A T M A L E, at lpl.com. So yeah, either way, I'd love to just take a look and talking to people. There's no, you know, you have to have a commitment to talk. You know, some people, some people have already contacted me. It's been a nice conversation. They're very happy to just talk. Good, excellent. So, yeah. Okay, guys, we're gonna kind of just move on to just generic stuff. Uh, I was looking in the fun paper. Stuff. Yeah, fun sure. stuff. Here's a little bit of fun stuff. Nobody knows what a sharky party is, huh? No. no okay. Blank. That's where the people who were getting foreclosed on destroy the inside of the house by basically inviting friends over to take sharpie uh, markers uh, 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 right on the walls. I and, should have known about that one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? I, I mean, people, I guess, I guess they just don't like getting foreclosed on. So, so this wasn't this wasn't a party like uh, Prince Harry had at uh, Vegas. <laughs> uh, this is where we saw the picture. That didn't stay in Vegas, did it? No, it did not. Yeah, that's what you know. What happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas. I don't quite get how that uh, picture's got. But out you know, what's funny about the Sharky yeah. party is that it's kind of the opposite of what, in some cases, we've heard that people have actually they just 
when they got foreclosed on, they actually went back into the rug and they left the place in good shape. I guess maybe just a, an ethical thing that they didn't want to, you know, it's like someone coming in and seeing your dirty laundry. Yeah, I mean, well, some people, when you get them, go through this process and it can be 18 months in the making. And then all of a sudden, they're so fed up and uh, they're trashing. I don't know if you guys saw the movie Inside Job. There's that scene where this family gets foreclosed upon and, and the, the foreclosure paid them to clean out their goods. An extra, like, oh, if you take all the stuff for your house, we'll give you fifteen hundred dollars more. Yeah, that's and smart. And they did it because they wanted the fifteen hundred dollars. Sure, that's actually oh. that's that's actually really smart. I'm like, but that's I mean, it was like they had a bonfire going out front. They're throwing furniture with sure. bonfire. It was really well. Nice. The Sharpie party, party, it's like you know, your little three year old daughter says, "Mommy, can I write on the wall?" Sure, sweetie, go ahead. Have at it. <laughs> okay. There was also uh, Lance Armstrong, oh, banned yeah. for life. Can Stress I buy stock in steroids? Is that yes, possible? Yeah. I don't know. After this week with Bartolo Colon and. Oh, and Malky and all that? Yeah, and then we got Lance Armstrong. Well, I mean, how long has this been going on? There's, uh, you know, Floyd Landis, I think they said, you know, also yeah. went after him. Well, that's the thing is if you take the, so if you strip Lance and you keep going down the list, someone suggested just give it to the last place guy, you know? Yeah. You're, talking, you're talking about right. the guarantee there's probably in he's not doping. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even I can win that one. In fact, we were, we were teasing when I used to, well, I still work out a little bit. Um, I've told this to the audience once before, but. That uh, you know, at one point I was hoping that someone would accuse me of being on steroids. My my friend said, "Yeah, uh, at uh, your age, be happy if you get accused of being on the Atkins diet." So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nuts. That no, the uh, I, I think that the the big challenge, you know, which which people rationalize is that Melky and Bartolo Colon, they you know these are million dollar decisions when they take these drug deals. I mean, literally for those. And Melky Cabrera was a nothing ball player. Yeah. And then he was an all star. And then, and then didn't he turn down some offer? Like, you know, he had. I mean, he might have. Yeah. Well, he turned down a contract extension, so they tabled it. The Giants bag it. And they, 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 the review was that the, even upon the suspension, they wouldn't have been able to get out of that contract extension. The Giants would okay. not have been oh, able to Okay, that, that was going to be yeah. my question was going to be that if he would have accepted the, the extension, would that have then been. Could they avoid it? Yeah, that's, I would think there'd be something in the contract. Well, they would now. try to, but. The, the smart money was that they would not be able to. Yeah, it's the, okay, it's well, players' association would let it happen. You know, oh, they turn geez. that. I mean, so like someone says, if, if someone's juiced up on steroids and has three good years, you sign them to a long term, long term contract. Then three years later, they're banned and can't use steroids anymore, and they're awful. You still have to pay them. Okay, that's true of basketball and uh, and baseball. They don't put in the contract. Oh, by the way, if you use steroids, um, this no. is void. So with Lance Armstrong, Lance Armstrong, Lance Armstrong, Armstrong when they keep saying doping, what what? actually mean by that. That means he's a dope for taking it. <laughs> yeah. so I always think of blood doping. And then it's I, think, I think it's part, it's it's a little bit of everything. It's, it's blood, I mean, they include the blood, blood doping and then taking banned substances, what they said, so it's a little bit. And I think, I mean, the big rumor, I think, one year was that he was pumping, like, blood from six months ago that they preserved in his system. Like, you know, he, was, he didn't train for some period of time. And, you know, but I, I you know, I, I think it's, I mean, I, I had a daughter with cancer, Living strong organization oh, gives oh, back geez. so much, and it's tough. No, it's tough because, like Cheryl Crow says, I was in love with Lance Armstrong, the guy, not Lance Strong, Armstrong, the person. And you know, it's just oh, kind of yeah, tough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's okay, wild. guys, fun show today. We're gonna cut off for our thoughts for the day. My doctor told me that my cholesterol should be about the same as my weight, and since my cholesterol was over 350, I guess I better start eating a lot more fat to gain those extra pounds, huh? <laughs> And I'm still waiting to pay a doctor an extra fee if he will prescribe bacon for my diet. You know, you know any doctors like that? Yeah, and make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, really. And why is it that when we talk to God, we're praying, and when God talks to us, we're considered schizophrenic? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we tune in. We ask you, the audience, tune in next week to the best of investing. We're going to be giving away nine more free vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. Wishing you the best of investing. So long. Good. Should we cut to beep? <laughs>